Hi there! Welcome back to another video on the Montpress channel. This is Valerie and today we continue our series of videos for WordPress newbies. I'll help you find out the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. By the end of this tutorial, you learn which option suits your needs best according to your expectations, technical skills and goals. Before we unpack all the differences for you, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications for all new videos. Now, if you're ready, let's jump in. If you're ready to start a new website, you'll need to choose which software to build it on. It's a fact that WordPress is the most popular CMS nowadays and you already made a great choice. However, when first learning about WordPress, you probably get confused about the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. I remember my own experience and it was one of the first questions I wanted to receive answer to. It is really important to distinguish them to choose the right option for your online business. The first thing we should realize is that WordPress.org and WordPress.com are two ways to use WordPress. The software used to run both versions is the same. So then what's the difference and which is the best option for you? Let's find out. WordPress.com is a managed hosting platform that operates utilizing the software from WordPress.org. This fully featured hosted solution takes care of all the hosting related matters for its users. So when creating a WordPress.com site, you need to sign up for an account and walk through several steps. You then have to choose your website's type, pick a theme and customize a few other details during the process. And on the other hand, WordPress.org is the website where you can download the software for free. And once downloaded, to install WordPress, you need to have a web hosting service and a domain name. You can purchase them from WordPress hosting providers and domain registers. And some hosting providers offer a quick and easy installation method using an auto installer. And as you may guess already, the experience of having a WordPress.com site differs from having a self-hosted WordPress site. So having a website on WordPress.com reminds me of renting an accommodation. So you don't have to worry about the plumbing, you don't have to mow the backyard, you don't have to fix any of the home appliances if they break, and all of that is the owner's job. Similarly, WordPress.com supports your site and takes care of all the updates backups and security. You can even install third-party plugins and themes uh, when you're on the business plan. When you opt for a self-hosted site, it's like buying your own dwelling. So you can remodel it or build an extension. But if something goes wrong, you have to figure out how to fix the issue. So luckily, WordPress.org has a great support forum with helpful volunteers and the WordPress codex with its documentation on how to get started. But still, you're responsible for regular updating and backing up your content. In general, the differences between WordPress.com and self-hosted site are more about the cost and services provided by the host than the functional ability of the software. 
Speaking about the price point, WordPress.com offers a subscription-based model for its users and it has different pricing tires with additional features depending on which plan you've chosen. So note, uh, the free version comes with a custom subdomain and you must pay for a domain name if you want full customization. With WordPress.org, in addition to hosting and domain, you'll need to purchase an SSL certificate as well. And the advantage is that you can select the best web hosting for you. And this means you can choose how much space you want, how fast your server will be, and how secure your website will be. By the way, most host companies provide a free custom domain name for the first year. Notably, WordPress.org provides unlimited customization possibilities for its users, which is one of the greatest benefits. All plugins, uh, themes, and extensions could be tailored to meet individual requirements, and this gives you greater control of your site's appearance and also the ability to add specific features to suit your business needs. And when running a WordPress.com site, you'll only be able to do what the platform gives you access to. As I said before, they limit the software based on your subscription level. With WordPress.org, it's possible to select and customize any WordPress themes and plugins. You can install either free or premium uh, themes and plugins and then modify and customize them in any way you like. WordPress.com offers a limited set of free WordPress themes and you're not allowed to modify any fonts or layouts on your site. But still, both .org and .com require a certain level of technical knowledge to use when configuring. If you want to make money with your website, WordPress.org is likely the better option. With WordPress.org, you have no restrictions on monetization and you're free to add affiliate links to your content, use advertising plugins, or create a membership plugin. In contrast, WordPress.com does not allow websites with a vast majority of sponsored content and imposes some restrictions on affiliate marketing. If you want to sell on WordPress.com, you'll need to be signed up to its e-commerce pricing plan. This plan enables you to accept international payments, connect with shipping companies, and customize the design elements of your online store. To compare, creating an online store using a self-hosted site is a more affordable option for running an e-commerce store. You have access to multiple e-commerce plugins, both paid and free. Additionally, you can integrate third-party payment providers such as PayPal or the Stripe platform. And whether you plan to launch an e-commerce site or a simple blog, you'll want to grow an audience, traffic, or customer base, right? So when it comes to search engine optimization, both the .com and .org provide uh, SEO tools to some degree. Marketing a website can mean many things, including sign-up forms or newsletter or account creation capabilities. And with a self-hosted site, all of these options are available to you via theme features and plugins. And with a free WordPress.com website, your options are extremely limited. As for security, both .com and .org 
can be vulnerable to security threats. So while no content management system is 100% secure, WordPress has a quality security system for the core software. And if you use WordPress.com, your site will automatically update themes and plugins. Furthermore, the core software updates will also happen behind the scenes. WordPress.org does not automatically update its software. So if you have a self-hosted site, you'll need to enable automatic upgrades or watch carefully for any updates and update manually. Also, you should know how important it is to update your software. Approximately 40% of hacks happen to WordPress sites that are not using the latest software version. In case you don't know how to update your WordPress plugin safely, we strongly recommend this video on our channel. So you as an admin of your site or your webmaster must follow all the basic security practices. To sum up, the key difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org is who's actually hosting your website. In the end, whether you go with .com or .org, you still get to use WordPress. And that's a win, no matter which side you are on. All in all, if you're a blogger or business owner selling products and services, you're best sticking with a self-hosted website via wordpress.org but if you just want a free website to experiment with if you don't want to deal with hosting third-party tools and installing custom website functionality by hand or even don't need customization consider using wordpress.com so if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to smash that like button. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.